It's another week of trying to stay alive in our survivor pools. Survivor, man, that's like the beer bong of the contest. We got knocked out of Survivor in week one. I think it's in my rules of Survivor. I think no Jaguars. Every week, you can be done. Survive and advance with us right now on BetQL Daily, presented by BetMGM. Let's talk about uh, Survivor Angle, Sam. I mean, it's been two weeks of favorites getting home. All right, people are advancing, people are advancing. Not much blood. There's a lot less conversation about Survivor due to that. And since so many people have been knocked out. And now we sit here and uh, see, this is when it gets uncomfortable to me. Most people are feeling comfortable because it's been easy the last couple of weeks. This is when, I don't know if it's this week or next week, but one of these weeks, it's going to be pow, just like we saw in the first month of the season. So who's more likely to lose? Baltimore or the Jets? One of those two is going down. I've got this premonition that it's either going to be a Jameis Winston party or a Drake May party. Do you feel me on either one of those? Division matchups. It's one of my rules. I'm not George. I don't sit here and make these commandments and then just ignore my commandments. Like no. Commandment one, pick a winner. <laughs> Number one, pick a winner. <laughs> so I'm texting yes. with I'm texting with one of the teams alive in your league. You have two teams left in your rich people league, correct? Okay, yeah, yeah. Still and Pat and Cherezi are saying they have it narrowed down to three. Lions, yeah. Chiefs, Broncos. Those are their three that they've cut Top, it down to. The three double digit lines, yeah. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. No, with, with two people left, you're one of two. You don't get too crazy. We don't need to talk about strategy. They already chopped a lot is in pocket. They're still playing for a good amount of money and they don't worry about saving teams. So mm -hmm. in their situation, I think it's a little different than most last week, both of those teams ended up taking Washington. So they both get the commanders and they and they win, so they're still playing on Detroit, KC, Denver. I agree. Okay, here's where I'm at at the very top, and I'm talking for most leagues. And I'm also looking at the perspective of being in pools with a lot of people left. That's what these revivals are right now. It was a crazy week or two when the revivals were getting popular, but most have the majority of the pool left, so you do have to consider that. Denver. Is it, this is a Denver spot, right? With Bryce Young under center. I was looking at their schedule. This might be the last time that the Broncos are favored all year. And not only are they favored, but they're favored by double digits at home. I know it's a rookie quarterback, but it's Bryce Young, man. And that Panthers defense has got nothing on people. The other two that they are considering might be one and two in people's power rankings. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So unless it's like two people left, like that specific situation with so many options, three double digit spreads, six of at least a touchdown, seven of at least six and a half. I don't, I don't feel the need to pick the best or second best team in the NFL with so many options this week. So there are a lot of people that would be going into a spot in week eight that are still alive in, their first contest that are saving Kansas city for something. Mm -hmm. People don't want to burn Kansas city because Kansas city is the best team in football. But if you need a win, it feels almost automatic, almost automatic. Nothing is in the NFL, but if Kansas city plays Vegas a hundred times in Vegas, how many times do the Raiders win? Four, five. It's not, it's not a good football team. They're clearly not well coached. They've lost their best player on offense. Max Crosby's been dinged up. Who's a quarterback? Gardner Minshew? Terrible. How did the Raiders win? On, how did the Raiders win on Christmas? 
One of those times was this past Christmas. Raiders win 20 to 14. Helps get Antonio Pierce that job. Uh, Aiden O'Connell, I guess, because he didn't turn the football over. Samir White somehow ran all over them. Doesn't make much sense. But, yeah, if you're looking for a victory, doesn't scare you at all. Divisional matchup. Not a little bit. Like something mm-hmm. crazy might happen. Okay. No, I, get it. I would not think it would happen in Vegas unless the entire team is shooting dice until seven in the morning. I mean, that that could happen. You just yeah. don't take a team seriously. But you brought up some of the stuff from the summer when Vegas went out of its way as a team to Boy. talk smack about Mahomes. That's a bad so idea. you're not going to get an unfocused, lackadaisical Chiefs team. And look, they know they have issues. That's why they went out and got DeAndre Hopkins. You usually don't see an undefeated team go out and make a trade. That's fair. Yep. Is it not? Usually an undefeated team through six, seven weeks says, oh, we're good. We got everything we need in this room. They know better. They know that they've been lucky to get to this point. They know their quarterback hasn't been good. They're not going to mm-hmm. come out and say that. But when you go trade for a 32-year-old wide receiver, you're saying without saying, we still have problems that we need to correct. And that is a team like we've got a lot of clicks this week on on X, and apparently you and I are thriving on TikTok. Huge. I don't know how it's happening. That Mahomes Lamar Jackson conversation is still getting blasted on Instagram, and everybody keeps saying, "Oh, Lamar doesn't have any Super Bowl rings." Doesn't matter. We're talking about NFL MVP this season, but Kansas City has not been great. Just because they're six and zero doesn't mean they've been great. They've been lucky in some ways. They've gotten the job done. But this team still needs to figure out what it's going to be going into the playoffs. And I'm still, of all the teams in the league that you don't want to see in the postseason, Kansas City's number one. It's not Mm -hmm. even a question. But I don't think you're going to get Kansas City roll into this game in Vegas and not take the game seriously. I'm going to read you the Lions' remaining schedule. Because what I'm thinking is this game against Tennessee might be the last super obvious spot where you just take the Lions, okay? You tell me if I'm wrong, if there's another spot, oh, no, you take the Lions and Survivor there. I'm saying obvious where they're going to be a heavy favorite. After this week, it's at Green Bay, at Houston, they do host Jacksonville, at Indy, host Chicago, host Green Bay, host Buffalo, at Chicago, at San Francisco, when maybe they're healthier, and then they close the season against Minnesota. Is this the last obvious spot for the Lions? They're an excellent team. They're probably going to win the majority of those games, but where you feel super comfortable, is this the last spot? In terms of comfortability, this is the spot Yep, against Tennessee. This is it. I mean, we're not exactly – you know, recreating the wheel here, telling you to take big favorites in Survivor, although we really haven't had these conversations all year long, especially early in the year. Like, ah, look out for all these landmines. None of these big favorites are winning. But there's been a regression in the last two, three weeks. And, Good teams and the mar- beating bad teams. And the market's it's sharper happening. now. And we got a sample mm-hmm. size. The market is sharper now. Definitely. Do you like Detroit more than KC or vice versa? I like Detroit more than KC. Yeah? I like Detroit more. Yeah. Well, they're at home. Being at home helps. Yep. Yeah. And hmm, just the KC, we're splitting hairs. We're looking for reasons why you wouldn't like KC. But I want to see D-Hop a couple weeks after he's uh, integrated into the offense. Right? Uh, They might get a little bit healthier. We'll see if some of those pieces end up coming back for KC. Do you want to play Vegas on the road or you want to play Vegas at home? Because they still haven't played Vegas at home yet. There's going to be that opportunity down the road. They've got Tampa and Denver the next couple weeks. There's a lot of different opportunities for you to use the Chiefs. And like we just mentioned, I don't know that there are with the Lions. I'm going to ask you uh, one that's, you know, it's a heavy favorite. But if you go in order from largest spread and working your way down, it's six. The Jets will not be a popular pick. If you're looking to go against the grain and just have different picks moving forward, 
The Jets are a touchdown favorite at New England. The Jets swept the Patriots last year without Rodgers. It's a divisional matchup. What about the Jets? Not many are going to pick them. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm. Uncertainty. I don't know how that team reacts to Mayo and what's been going on this week. I I think that could be a Patriots three point loss where you sweat. If you have the Jets, you're you're nervous in the fourth quarter, and then they they barely escape. Um, I know some guys that took seven and a half with the uh, Patriots, and they're they're good at the NFL. They took the points, and now that market is mm-hmm. mostly seven. Uh, there are a couple still seven and a halfs out there. I I wouldn't put that in Survivor. The one that I thought about was the Chargers. I wrote at that home down. against New Orleans. Yeah. I mean, New Orleans is just mangled on offense. And guys are getting excited now around that team when Taysom Hill is practicing. Oh, yay! That's where that's where the Saints are right. Oh, we get Taysom Hill back. That's how bad it is from a weapon standpoint in New Orleans. And- Camara's playing with a broken hand. Mm-hmm. Olave did practice, but Camara said he's gonna he's obviously you're not getting uh the great Camara that we saw in the first couple of games. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I circled Chargers. I circled Denver. I circled Detroit. Those are the three that I ended up circling. Probably the last chance to, to use them because of the schedule, but I'm okay with I'm okay with passing on Pittsburgh. I want to do this next year. I want to start a league, and maybe this sounds a little silly, but I want to take all my friends that want to do it and maybe some mm-hmm. listeners – and you pick three underdogs a week on the money line. Okay. And let's say you take a nine-point dog that wins, you get nine points. If you take a 14-point dog that wins, you get 14 points. And you add up all the points at the end of the year, and whoever has the most points wins the league. Yeah, is that love it. Is that a dumb idea? Is that something that's already being done? That's what I want to do. Rather than pick one NFL winner a week, I'd rather take a shot at three underdogs and and you add up the discrepancy in the point spread and roll that total over the year. What about that? Is that a good idea? I love that idea. And you have to see, but we're into betting on underdogs, so we're studying these dogs and which ones could be live. So even if you have a rough start, let's say you go 0 for 3, you're fine, right? You don't get knocked out at any point. You're alive the entire year. And then if you if you fall behind, there will be people that just say, give me the three biggest dogs every single week. And that could make it even worse for them where they fall further behind. A lot of different strategies involved. But, yeah, I do like that. You would just have to pick, okay, where are we using the number from? It's going to be this specific book, the closing number probably, right, instead of unless you want to lock it in on a Thursday or Friday. What would be yeah, better? you could lock it in. You could lock it in Thursday or Friday. It's tough to lock in Friday because then people only have a couple – the days to pick they pick friday or saturday you could lock it in thursday morning and go if i had to pick three dogs to win this week no surprise i would go cleveland indianapolis and dallas 